In this video, we're going to talk about canceling a fetch request using the abort controller API. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamid. And here on this channel, we talk about modern web dev topics like React and Next.js. So let's get into this. In a previous video on the channel, linked somewhere in the card, I talked about debouncing in React. And the idea was to delay the user requests as they're typing in, in this search box. Here, we're going to extend that example to also send a fetch request once they're done typing in. So the idea is we want to search within our to-do items and find a to-do item that matches what they're searching for. So I've created some dummy data, some dummy to-do lists over here, and also included an API, which all it does is imports that to-do array and then filters through those arrays based on a term that we can send to the send point and filters that array based on the term that we are sending in here and returns that filtered list of to-dos. Just to see what it does right now. So if I type in, for example, learn, uh, as you can see here, this was just typed in, the debounced value was typed in with a little delay and this is using the use debounce hook that receives this text state, which is just hooked up to this input. So upon any every keystroke, we're just updating this text, but we don't but we don't want to send a fetch request on every keystroke. That's why we're using this debounce hook, so that we are waiting one second for them to finish typing and then send a request. Okay, let's actually start fetching some to-do items. Let me just create some new states for this. I'm going to have my to-dos, which are going to be an empty array to begin with. Let's also create a loading state, which is false to begin with. And let's also create an error state. So if any error happens, we can catch that. To send our fetch request, we're going to use use effect and we're going to run a function anytime that this debounced value changes and the function that we want to run over here is first we want to check to see if this debounced value is truthy, if not, we're going to return. So if there is no text over there, we don't want to send that request. If there is value in there, we want to set our loading state to true, wipe out any prior error, and then actually send a fetch request to our endpoint, which is API for slash to do's. And we're going to include this term to be this debounced value. Then excuse me we're going to get the response we're going to return the json and then we're going to get our data which has this to do's property on it and we're going to call set to do's and pass in that array as our to do's let me just wrap this meant to be around this destructuring over here okay so let me just bring in some HTML I have created before over here so that we can actually show these to do's all we're doing over here is that if we are loading I'm going to show loading if there's any error we're going to show the error message or say something went wrong and if we got our to do's back we're going to map over them and just show a list item over here. So let's see if this works. So the loading state, and then it shows the filtered to-dos. And again, if you're wondering why this is taking a bit longer to come is because I'm having this await wait 3000, which is just a function that sets a timeout for that number of milliseconds that you pass to it. So it just delays this whole process for three seconds that's um, intentionally to mimic 
fetching data from a database on a slower network if your user is kind of trying to be on this page. Now, let's talk about a potential problem over here. So let's refresh this page and say you're trying to type in for something and before the result come back, the user changes the page to a different page. So the component that was fetching data is now unmounted. But within this asynchronous task, which is run by fetch, we are setting some state. So we're setting state on a component that's no longer there. Now, before, there used to be a React warning for this. So if you changed pages and then if you looked at your console logs, you would have seen here an error from React saying you're trying to use the user state hook or set the state on an unmounted component. That warning has been removed by React, but the problem is still there. Well, the reason why React removed that warning was because the way developers were trying to get rid of that warning wasn't very efficient. So if you search for um, setting state on an unmounted component, you would see solutions that would recommend uh, using like a ref uh, to, to um, kind of hold a state throughout the lifecycle of the component if, to see if the component is mounted or not. And then they would typically return a function from their use effect that just sets that mounted the current uh, to false. And then inside of their asynchronous task, when they want to set a state, they check to see if this current is true or not. If it isn't, meaning that this component was unmounted, they won't set the state. But there are problems with doing this. First of all, React already checks to see if the component is unmounted. And that's why we see that error. Because when it wants to set the state, it checks the tree to see if the component is in the React tree. And if it isn't, it tells you, hey, this component is in the tree. You're trying to set the state. And that's the warning. So it's kind of redundant doing this. And another thing is that these refs that you're creating in, in any component that needs to do this are resources that you're using and holding uh, for no reason. And the third problem is uh, that even though you're checking to see if the component is mounted or not before you're setting the state, you're still fetching this resource. You're still performing a resource intensive or asynchronous task for a component that no longer is there. So a better solution instead of using a ref or any state to check to see if the component is mounted or not is to use the abort controller and abort this fetch request or cancel this fetch request if the component gets unmounted. So the abort controller, controller is an interface, a, a DOM API that you can use to abort one or more web requests for whatever reason that you want. You can create a new uh, kind of controller with this constructor that we're going to see in a second. And this allows you to cancel this request that's time consuming and is asynchronous or resource intensive if the component is unmounted. So how are we going to do this? What we're going to do is we're going to create a new controller. Bear with me for a second over here. So I'm going to call the abort controller to create a new controller. And to this fetch request, I can pass in a signal, which is from my controller dot signal. And all I want to do is I want to return a function from my use effect, which runs before the component is unmounted, which I'm going to call the controller and call the abort method on it. So what happens here is that we're creating a new instance of this abort controller. We are passing a signal to our fetch request. And using this interface, we're going to cancel it if this component is unmounted. To actually see this in action, let's add a catch statement to our fetch request to receive the error. And the way that this abort controller works is that it throws an error if it is canceling your request. And that error has a name property of abort error. So in the catch statement, I'm checking to see if the error name is abort error, meaning that this component is just unmounted, it's returning this function, so the controller is calling the abort, and that throws an error to cancel this fetch request. 
In that case, I'm just going to log it for us to see here. Let me just actually make this a bit bigger. And then if it's not that error, I'm going to set my own error state, which I'm showing down here if there is anything. And then maybe after this, since we are setting this loading state to true, maybe we can just call finally and say, hey, finally, whether or not there was an error or we got our to-dos back, let's just set the loading back to false, okay? So this time around, we're going to see this doing the same thing that it was doing before, but we are going to also check this abort controller. So let me type in learn and we are fetching and we should see the results over here without any problems because the component wasn't unmounted. We fetched the to-dos, we got the returned filtered array of to-dos and then we set our to-dos, there was no error. We finally set the loading to off. That's why everything worked perfectly. Now let's see what happens if I start typing in, let me just refresh this so you can see the loading state and all. So if I type in next, but before I get the result, I change the page which unmounts the previous component completely, I can see here my console log error that says DOM exception was thrown and the user aborted the request, which means as soon as this component was about to unmount because we clicked on this link to go to a different page, this return function from our use effect is going to get called right before the unmount. This is going to cancel our request before anything happens, and then we're going to go to this new page, which saves us the resource or the time and memory of actually doing this fetch in the back end. <clears throat> and fetching the resources from our API or our database um, for a component that's no longer there. That's it for this video, folks. I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.